In this presentation, <clears throat> I will talk about eigenvalue problems and its relation to free vibrations of the structure. So, some of the key concepts that I am going to introduce in this presentation is eigenvalue problem, of course, and the concept of free vibration. <clears throat> I will also talk about eigenvalues and eigenfrequencies, the relation between these two, and finally about eigenvectors and the relation till the vibration patterns. <clears throat> so, in an earlier presentation, we have concluded that resonant response, with a resonant response, we mean that we have a strong amplification factor. So that means that a small excitation will give a large response. So, if we now consider a kind of limit case, suppose now, that in theory we can find solutions that allows free uh, uh, vibration, well, non-zero vibration for zero excitation case. That is what we call free vibration. That is vibration that can exist without any excitation. So how can we find that kind of vibration? Well, if we start with the equations of motion, the governing equation, we can, well, we have here the um, inertia forces defined by the mass matrix and the displacement vector x. So this is the inertia forces. This is the viscous damping, <coughs> that is the um, uh, velocity proportional friction forces, and this is the stiffness forces. So D here is a damping matrix and K is a stiffness matrix. So in this side, on the right hand side, we should have the external exciting forces. So if we put this equal to zero and try to solve this system, then the solution is what we're looking for, the free vibration. So <clears throat> zero excitation, the zero vector here, as I mentioned. If we now transform to the Laplace domain, we do a Laplace transformation, then this system here will be transformed to an algebraic homogeneous equation, to a system of homogeneous equations. And that system will look like this. So we have an unknown vector, x top, and a coefficient matrix looking like this. <clears throat> and this system has a zero solution. So from linear algebra we know that in order to find a non-trivial solution to a homogeneous equation system we must satisfy a characteristic equation or frequency equation as it's sometimes called. So all S that satisfies this equation allows a non-trivial solution. So the system determinant, the system matrix determinant, should be equal to zero. And so the roots of this equation is denoted eigenvalues to the eigenvalue problem. So this problem is actually called an eigenvalue problem. And this SM then is the eigenvalues. <coughs> Now, uh, one can show that this characteristic equation is actually identical to the equation that we used before to define the system poles. If you remember the uh, equation where we set, uh, set the denominator of the system transfer function equal to zero. So these are identical. This is actually according to Kramer's rule for solving linear systems equation, the denominator of the solution vector is actually the determinant of the system matrix. So we can conclude now that the homogeneous equation or motion will give an eigenvalue problem with eigenvalues that are identical to the system poles. Also, the system poles they are sort of the free response frequencies that 
is sort of able to solve the governing, governing equations with zero excitation. So one can then ask, well, since we have now, since we can find non-trivial solutions, then we can of course find uh, the solution vector to our system. Uh, okay, I've forgotten the uh, SD, the friction term here, but it should be an SND here. So if we now insert the eigen one of the eigenvalues sn here then we can find the solution vector phi n as a solution to this linear system equations uh, with of course n components here if we have capital n uh, degrees of freedom in the system and uh, one property of this solution vector here is that it's um, not fully determined. It is actually, you can normalize it with an independently, well, uh, with an arbitrarily chosen scaling factor. So that means that this uh, vector is only sort of a shape vector that tells you the response pattern at this free vibration oscillation frequency. So when the system vibrates at the free oscillation frequency, then it sort of shows a response pattern or shape given by this shape vector, the eigenvector. A system performs free vibration when it vibrates in absence of exciting forces. So this beam here, if I start vibrations like this, after a while, a few seconds, the vibrations it performs is one example of free vibration. So the whipping pattern you see here, the, the beam performs, is actually the first characteristic vibration shape corresponding to the eigenvector, the first eigenvector. And you can also see a certain oscillation rate, a vibration frequency, and that the amplitude is decaying, slowly decaying. So the rate of the oscillation, the frequency, and the decay rate can actually be determined from the system pole, or eigenfrequency of this system. So what you have actually seen now is a physical realization of an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. So in the demonstration we could observe that when the initial forced oscillation has died out the system sort of oscillates with a decaying amplitude and that is the free oscillation the free vibration of the system and the oscillation and decay rates that is the frequency of, of vibration and the uh, the um, well one way to to um, describe the decay rate is actually the the logarithmic decrement of the system. Those two properties are actually fully determined by the complex valued system poles or these response frequencies as we have denoted. And this is exactly these eigenvalues that we have talked about earlier. The free oscillation shape is determined by the eigenvectors, or rather defined by the eigenvectors and initial conditions. The initial conditions, that is the vibrations that is excited by the exciting force. In the demonstration, I sort of hitted the beam to start the vibrations. And after a few seconds, the initial vibrations, the initial conditions have died out. And what remains then is the free vibrations 
given by the eigenvalue and the um, eigenvector. <coughs> so, to conclude, first of all, the eigenvalues, which we often denote eigenfrequencies, are closely related to the system poles. The real and imaginary part of the eigenvalues, that is the system poles, uh, gives the oscillation rate and decay, that is the damping of the system. Secondly, the eigenvectors, shape vectors, describe the oscillation shape when the system vibrates at free vibration. And that means that we can introduce a new concept which we denote an oscillation or vibration mode and it's defined by the so-called mode parameters first of all the system pole and the vibration shape corresponding to the particular system pole so each set each pair of pole and vibration shape defines a single mode of the system. System pole and mode shape, yes. And each structure then has a set of vibration modes. A set of pairs of vibration modes like this. And this is a system property that we can use to model the system vibrations. We'll show in a later presentation that all the system's vibration, all vibrations of the system can be described as a linear combination of the modes. This will be dis uh, well uh, treated in a later presentation.